Okay, um, thought I would do a, uh, a quick walkthrough of the Portia official PWIS uh, TSI uh, web application. This is a database um, that I use quite extensively actually for do-it-yourself projects. Anytime I have uh, questions about uh, how something in the 991 is assembled, uh, and I have a 14 uh, career 4S. Um, and for those that know me on uh, various online sites and forums, I do a number of different DIY projects uh, that require disassembly, removing front end covers, you name it. Um, and sometimes I just like to learn uh, about how something works. So um, I've been using this tool for uh, probably almost two years, year and a half at least. Um, found it's very good. I thought I would just do a walkthrough. I'm not going to uh, share with you any of the, the content that I uh, have downloaded. I'm not offering to, to sell anything here or anything else. I just wanted you to see what this tool is. Um, and you can look it up, you know, Google this, uh, or contact me if you want the, the URL. You can probably see it on the screen. Um, you can see that there's pricing and, you know, so on. Um, you know, pay by the, the document and so on. So I'm going to, I'll log in and I'll show you um, what content's there, how I use it, uh, and I have a, a couple accounts. This one I'm going to show you is a um, paper document type account. Uh, I also have another account that you can uh, keep updated on an annual basis, uh, or you can also do it based on uh, blocks of time. So you can buy a month, two months, six months, things like that. Um, I can't remember all the different variables there, but you can see in this account, uh, and this is the main screen once you, you log in, you can see at the bottom it, it keeps track in this case of how much money you have on account um, and you know some other information printing and so on. Um, but the main thing is over on the left hand menu, um, the first thing I found you have to start with is identifying what vehicle or vehicles you want to do a search uh, for or look up. And you can actually do a VIN as well. I'm not going to do that now just because I don't want to go look up the VIN, <laughs> my VIN. Um, but the other way that I usually typically always use is identification via vehicle data. And they make it really easy uh, in this um, application to, to find what you're looking for. And I'll show you what I do typically to, to get information on the 2014 991, but you'll see there's a lot of options. So the model range is listed here. You can see they list just about everything they've ever produced. Um, in this case, I'll go with the, uh, the 991, which is what I have. It then populates the next list with um, model years. And I have a 14. You can see they actually have all the way up through 17 now. That just uh, the 17s just started showing up uh, online here uh, recently. Um, but you know, in my case, 14. I'm not sure what the letters designate, but uh, anyway. Uh, and then the model type is you have to go through this list and find the specific model configuration. You can see they have right-hand drive as well um, for uh, non-U.S. market, non-North American markets. Um, this must be the 50th anniversary edition, uh, and you can see they have everything in here. You know, all the different the turbos, um, cabs, GT3s, um, and then in my case, uh, again, I'm, I'm looking for the Carrera 4S. Now, you can see in almost every one of these entries, they list, first they'll list the North American market, and then you'll see an RHD for right-hand drive. Um, for some reason, the Carrera 4S listed here does not have the RHD, so I always just pick the first one, and I guess that's just... You know, I'm assuming the next one is the right-hand drive, which I don't have. Um, and then you hit next. And then it seems like nothing happened, but what it did was it actually stored that information uh, in sessions so that you can now go to um, a document search. Now, they offer different options for searching. Uh, default search is what I usually use, but sometimes for kicks, I'll do the graphical search. And the first thing it pre presents for you is what is it you want to look through? And I almost always use the workshop manuals. I found that based on the model year and car you pick, the configuration, there may not be any information at all in some of these others. Um, but you know, they always typically have the workshop manuals. Uh, and this is the visual view again. So what happens is um, once you select that for work manuals, you'll see there's a, a menu structure on the left and the, all these images. And you can either just click on these to, to dive into subgroups or you can use, uh, you know, in this case, um, just click on a, a folder and it drills down 
and you can see then you go into a component area um, and I found this is a you can get through this pretty quickly it's very nice navigation so on the front end front wheel suspension and drive shafts and I, I did find though that sometimes where you think something will be listed it won't be and I'll try maybe I'll come across something like that um, before uh, you know I get too much into this but you know for the most part it's pretty simple to get to and what happens is now that you've selected something if you go to the next level and say okay I'm, I'm interested in the wheel suspension powertrain front you'll get a list of documents and then these documents um, or you know these these topic areas for the documents like if I'm interested in the, um, the coil springs or the front spring, spring strut uh, when I click on that it takes you to down the bottom of the screen you'll see any documents that are related that are workshop manuals that include uh, the front spring strut. So removing and installing front strings, spring strut and disassembling and assembling the front spring strut. Um, I, you probably, if, if you looked at my blog, I actually have some of these documents. But every time you click on this area, the results, you will be charged whatever the fee is for that document type in this case. Um, because I'm, again, in this login, I used a, uh, uh, an account that has a pay per document. And each document is cost different amounts of money. These typically the workshop manuals are are really cheap. I mean, we're talking like two dollars something um, each. Um, and uh, sometimes if they're training materials, diagrams, wire diagrams, more complex documentation, uh, they could go up to like eleven dollars, twelve, fifteen dollars each. Um, so you do want to be careful how many things you click on, and then make sure that you you're getting exactly what you need. So I thought I'd show you this as well, that right now it shows the sub-assembly, but if you mouse over uh, the various components here, you can see they'll come up and it'll show lower shock absorber mount. Um, this is the front drive shaft. I've got a, again, because this is a, a C4S, this is an all-wheel drive model, so you've got the front drive uh, shaft and uh, the CV joints and so on. This is um, the front wheel bearing, front wheel hub. Uh, I did a project where I changed the springs out on my C4S, uh, and this was very helpful to me, uh, and that's where I use some of these documents. And when you click, click into some of these documents, they'll actually uh, refer to other related documents or dependencies. Um, so you may find, once you drill into one of these, at the beginning of the document, it'll, it'll tell you if uh, there are other uh, prerequisites or other uh, procedures that you need to download uh, to follow. So, so the, again, you can go through this, um, you know, and find all different component areas, uh, exterior equipment, for example, um, you know, the, the sunroof, tilting roof, the bumpers, um, and the, again, they list this on body equipment outside versus body equipment inside, I think the other one was, um, which may include, let's see, all right, so seat frames, upholstery, uh, linings and insulation. Um, so again, you can see, and now this might be helpful, some of these for folks that are having noise problems, uh, rattles and things like that. I found that uh, some of the documents have been very helpful um, in uh, taking apart trim so that I can uh, uh, either work on something or resolve a, a rattle. I have a lot of these already downloaded that I've used, um, you know, to, to get the door panels off and get the various console panels off uh, and so on. Um, but again, this is the, the visual way of, of searching. If I wanted to do the um, non-graphical search, if I go back to the default, and again, this has maintained a session state of you know, the model and model year and configuration that I selected. Um, I could actually just type in, and you can see here some of the ones I've, I've typed in in the past. You know, so if I was looking for changeover valve, I could type that in. This is going to do a, a global search across all the documents. If it finds things other than work manuals, like uh, TIs and other things like that, it'll come back and show you, and I'll, I'll do the search. And then you can see here's all the documents, and these are almost all exclusively work manuals, it looks like. Let's see. Yeah. Um, these are all documents that refer to changeover valves. Um, and in some cases, I'm not sure why, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like subparts for PDK, and, you know, maybe it's because there's some programming or something else that affects the, uh, the changeover valve. Um, and, uh, you know, and then other cases, I'm, I'm curious, if I look through this, um, you don't always find initially exactly what you're looking for. 
Um, but this is okay. This is when he's here. This is what I would expect to see, and that's the overview of the vacuum system, line routing, changeover valves. I have that one. That's a very good one because it lists every one of the changeover valves that um, 991 owners have been having. Some 991 owners owners have been having issues with. Uh, in my case, um, there's a changeover valve that has failed twice on my 14 uh, C4S, um, where I, I get no heat in the passenger cabin. Um, and it's due to, uh, and they don't actually have a service bulletin on here, but it's due to um, moisture getting into the changeover valve uh, and causing it to fail. Um, that's a pretty common problem I've, I've seen people uh, report. Um, so, you know, there are other things we could look at. Uh, so that's the way you search and find work manuals. Um, in this case, uh, standard forms, you can see there's some basic stuff that they list up here as well. Um, I'm not going to click on those because I don't really want them. Um, but, you know, if I wanted to see what some more details, you know, in this case, it's a buck 80 U.S. dollars uh, for the, uh, let's see, condition title. I'm not even sure what that means. Condition of the port long life guarantee. Um, but there's some other recommended service maintenance uh, and so on. Um, let's see if there's, uh, let's see, information media. Okay, so here's another section. Um, and this, you might think this is the full, sec uh, full selection of values, but there's actually another group of these. So you can see there's a paint manual. Um, if I click on that, sometimes it's hit or miss if they'll actually have something in the system. Um, in this case, I clicked on it. I was just waiting for it to respond. These might be slower because they're uh, more complex. I'm not sure. Um, but you can see there's certificate, certification, there's diagnostic. Um, okay, so here's information media for the paint. Um, you can see, wow, there's a, there's a lot of documents here. Um, I've never actually used this one where it's the paint because I, I don't really need uh, more data about it. But I guess uh, if, if you have to do any paint correction procedures, you know, repaints, things like that, it might be good to know these things. Um, I'll go back to the selection, emissions. Uh, these are special tools, um, environmental, not that interesting. Um, this one is, though, again, this is the workshop manual uh, listing. This is the technical information. Uh, and in technical information, sometimes there'll be interesting articles. Um, uh, in this case, uh, correct way to handle sealing rings after removal. You know, there's basic uh, information for procedures. Um, if I go back. Uh, let's see, wiring diagrams, there's owner manuals, system-based repair instructions. So here's one that's interesting, noise and vibration. There's a bunch of new documents in here. Uh, disturbing noises. I know I'm not going to click on these because I don't feel like paying for them right now, but um, you can see there's some things that might be interesting to those uh, of you who experience problems that dealers are not addressing. Um, locating wind noise on vehicles with your wiper, sliding roof issues. Again, some pretty cool uh, sources of information um, that uh, uh, we can tap into uh, if we need to. And uh, let's see, not sure if there's anything in SIT. Yeah, there's no documents for my model year. Um, what I found though is if you want at any time, you can go back and select a different model year. So let's say I wanted to see something that was uh, maybe specific to 997. So here's the 997, and then you can pick your model range. Uh, you know, let's say I wanted to 12, and these are all the 2012 997s. Um, GS Cabrio, next. And if I go to uh, document search and graphical search, shop manuals, see what we get. So again, you could, if you have a project on some other car, um, some other model year, you could look. Also, looking here, you never know. There could be more information in here that would help you out. Um, and then, you know, the last thing uh, I'll leave you with is, you know, like I said, down the bottom, it keeps track. And as soon as you hit uh, how many documents you download, and, and if you're paying in blocks of, of dollars or money, um, this will keep counting down every time you uh, you debit. Uh, a document and eventually it'll get to zero. It'll tell you if you can't, you know, you get a warning message when you can no longer download things. Um, so it's pretty simple to use and then you can always uh, 
I can't remember where it is, but you can just go back and provide another credit card. So that's uh, that's basically the the walkthrough of the system. Um, again, if uh, you, you want to retain any of the information that you find uh, online here, uh, such as I do. I mean, I paid for a document, so typically what I do is I'll just go down to the print button. Um, I found that between different browsers, uh, just FYI, um, and here you can see I'm using Firefox. Uh, I've used Google Chrome mostly, um, but uh, I had some funky issues with uh, compatibility with Java um, for some of the print functions, some of the images I always had to make sure I, I finagled so that they would be actually printed out. Um, usually I print to PDF um, and then save the electronic file. So again, if you look at my, uh, uh, my blog on uh, plenums.blogspot.com, um, you'll see I have a listing there of all of the documents that I've actually worked with and can tell you about. Um, but uh, I hope this is helpful to some. Um, you know, I found it very helpful. I'm glad they offer this tool. Uh, I see a lot of people asking online about, you know, service manuals and, you know, work guides and things that they think that, uh, you know, there's going to be a book published or something. But I, I doubt that's going to happen. I think that um, this is the... Uh, the PWIS TSI tool is what, you know, service shops and, and independents and others probably access for working on these cars. Um, the documents themselves, uh, I'll just add a couple of comments. Sometimes they're, they're pretty good, um, and in other cases they're a little vague. Uh, what, what's frustrating is when you uh, open up one document and it lists maybe four other work manuals that you have to, to obtain to get the full picture, like the... Um, when I was working on the springs on my C4S, uh, the, there's a separate document for the um, uh, strut uh, removal, front strut removal, from the wheel carrier removal, and so on. And you'll even see in there they'll list things like, you know, uh, there's a, a, a information document on lifting the car properly, uh, and, and they'll reference those. Um, and, and they're relatively cheap in U.S. dollars uh, speak. Um, in our case, they're they're you know usually about buck 80, I think it was we saw. Um, so you can certainly download all of them, but I would just be selective in what you, you need and only download when you need it, but certainly save it or print it for yourself. Um, because of copyright and things, I wouldn't offer to <laughs> provide these documents or anything to anybody else, um, but uh, you know, certainly if people want to ask me questions about what I've learned from this tool and from the documents I've worked with, um, I'll be happy to share that. And that is it. I will leave you with that. Thank you very much for, for watching this.